but we just granted a motion to compel against you. Are you here in the United States or where are you? I'm, I'm actually moved to the UK with my British wife. Um, Your Honor, my, my uh, reason is Dan White is treating this as a criminal case. He's been abusive with my wife and myself. He said that he wants to throw people in jail than to collect the judgment. My wife moved to the United uh, States to start a life in the United States, and she fled the United States because she's afraid of the system. And I had to go with her because we're both autistic. We have mental problems. And um, so we wanted to, I, I, I had to go with her. Um, I came on here, Your Honor, because I wanted to defend myself against Dan's allegations. Um, I'm not hiding. I, I don't want to waste the court's time. That's why I've hired representation so I can properly defend uh, myself, despite that I have moved, Your Honor. I'll go on the record for this. Yes. Good morning, Your Honor. Just a second. Let's go on the record on clause number DC209893. Uh, and Tony, I want to go on the record on the court reporter record too. David Tyler Moss versus Marco Princip uh, all. Uh, counsel, make your appearances. Good morning, Your Honor. This is Hunter Nunn, N U N N, and almost Warrench from Warrench and Nunn for the plaintiff's judgment creditors, David Tyler Moss and Philalissimus LLC. Good day, good Judge. This is, this is, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, good morning, sir. Dan L. Wide for <clears throat> the uh, judgment creditors, uh, Moss and uh, Philalissimus. And there's another gentleman on the phone. Uh, could you state your name? Yes. Yes. Good day, Judge. Uh, this is Jamal Johnson with the law firm of Alex Fernandez on behalf of Brian Martin. So uh, I'm showing you guys the screen here. This is from the uh, uh, our Dallas County portal. I don't see that there's been a notice of appearance uh, from the Hernandez firm on this case. Have you guys filed a notice of appearance and maybe it's not up and if, it, if you have, I'd like to have you share screen it. We've just uh, come on board two days ago, sir. And um, that's a part of the reason why we're asking for the continuance. But have you filed it? But have you filed a notice of appearance? Not at the moment. I can't, I can't even really listen to you filed it until you filed a notice of appearance. Okay. Um, I don't believe one is on the record, but we are making an appearance here at this uh, hearing, and we intend to uh, file that notice today. Okay. What do y'all want to do about, I mean, generally my position is if you haven't filed a notice of appearance, you're not in the case because yes, sir. we have no record. We don't know who you are. We don't know if you're an attorney or not. I mean, we don't know anything about you if you haven't filed a notice of appearance. But sure. if the other side is okay with it and, and wants to move this hearing, I'm, I'm okay with that. But that's my general approach. If there's no notice of appearance, the attorney can't, can't appear. Your Honor, if I may, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and proceed this morning. Are you objecting to uh, the, I'm sorry, I can't I keep forgetting your, you said it was Jamal something and then with the Hernandez. Jamal firm, Johnson, Jamal. but but I'm with Alex Hernandez. Alex Hernandez um, is the firm that's hired and, you know, we're going to make a, a notice of uh, appearance today, but, you know, we definitely want to make an appearance on behalf of the client as we are uh, hired by, by the client. What is your feeling about that, uh, Mr. Wide? Well, um, <clears throat> we would uh, respectfully request uh, the court uh, continue on the motion to compel. Uh, we anticipate, if I'm correct, uh, Mr. Uh, Nunn and Mr. Warrens are going to ask you for a, a, a seven days for them to provide this discovery that we've been waiting for since last July or this past July, give or take. I think it was due late August. Um, Mr. Martin um, had counsel and he fired uh, earlier uh, in this matter. 
And <clears throat> if they would like to file a notice of appearance this afternoon and work with Mr. Martin uh, to provide the requested discovery within the next seven days, that would be fine with us. But uh, I will tell you up front, Judge, uh, it's not in my DNA to be anything other than really very candid with the court. Mr. Martin has never cooperated with us and we have no reason to believe he ever will. And uh, if you read the petition that was recently consolidated pursuant to your orders earlier this week, that's now in your court, you will see that time and time again, we've requested this financial data from him uh, and we never get anywhere and he's currently hiding out. We have no physical location for him. So I don't think he, uh, and I have nothing against Mr. Johnson. I've never met him. I don't know the Hernandez firm, but I would suggest to you, they have not, they don't have clean hands, so to speak, to ask you or plead for anything right now. And I will then defer any further comments to Mr. Nunn and Mr. Warrange. I guess my, my and I appreciate that, but. Yes, I guess my, my issue is, do you object to Mr. Johnson even being here, like responding to this because they haven't filed the notice of appearance? Your Honor, yes, we do so object. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Johnson, if, if you want to, you know, uh, file and, you know, I don't mind if you, if you were here in person, I would let you write it out. Uh, but if you want to e-file it and email it to my court coordinator, uh, right now, I'd be happy to allow you to, to speak, but since we don't know, and I'm not questioning you, it's just you're not. There's nothing in the system to indicate that, you're, that there's an attorney for Mr. Martin, uh, but if you sure. want to do that real quick uh, while we're in the hearing, I'd be glad to let you, you, you talk, but we need a notice of appearance. So, okay. All right. Is there, so the court. is there an email address that I could, uh, sure. can, I, can I call? Ron, Rhonda, can you put that in the, in the, uh, in the chat? So Rhonda will give you her email address. All right, let's go ahead and go forward with the motion. Yes, sir. May I proceed? You may. Thank you, Judge. May it please the court. I want to thank the court for its time this morning and for the opportunity to be heard. Judge, this is a very simple matter, really. Uh, we've got a judgment enforcement action pending in your court. Uh, the domestication of a judgment from the United States Court against Mr. Martin. We sent post-judgment discovery to Mr. Martin on July 29th. It was e-served to his counsel at that time, Adrian Bauer. We, As of today, we have not received any response from Mr. Martin. Uh, that's obviously a problem for us on, I believe it's 34 interrogatories, 43 requests for production. The only document that he's produced at all is a document that purports to be a 2018 tax return. So judge, we're here to ask the court to order Mr. Martin to answer these interrogatories in full without objections, to respond to the request for production in full and produce all responsive documents uh, to me at my office within seven days. Okay, Mr. Wide, did you want to say anything? Uh, uh, no, sir. Um, I do think of, well, uh, no, um, at this point in time, I'll, I'll defer to, uh, to, like I said, Mr. Nunn and Mr. Warrich. Uh, if you will, sir. I, I didn't hear all the other announcements. I, I apologize, Judge. I was preparing for a hearing after, right after yours, and I, I don't know who Mr. Lee represents, and I don't know about Miss Dominique. I mean, Miss Miss Lee, Stephen oh, Lee. Um, Mr. Lee, I assume you're on my next hearing. You're not on this one, correct? <laughs> He's you, You're muted, sir. You're, you're muted. He's talking, but he's muted. Yeah, Judge, I'm sorry. I was muted. I, I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm here for the next next hearing. Miss <laughs> Lynn Rada, what are you what are you here for? 
Miss Rada is in my case, Judge. Your Honor, I, I apologize. Let me get, uh, I also, I'm on the hearing with uh, Mr. Lee. Okay. And I think everyone else here is an intern. Oh, okay. <laughs> We have Ms. Lee, Ms. Simmons, and Mr. Sharp. So, all right, Rhonda, uh, the court will go ahead and grant the motion. Uh, I don't see that you guys filed an order on the compel, did you? We have not yet, Your Honor. I'd be happy to do that as, as soon as you're in. All right, Rhonda, do, can you check the email to see if we have something from Mr. Johnson? Judge, I still did not see the email address, and I'm having to actually draft a notice of appearance impromptu. So I don't see an email address to even send it to once it's drafted. Let's see. I'll stop sharing, check the chat. So it's right here in the chat, she posted it Right. So, ago. so I was I was initially uh, engaged via phone only, and I I just logged on on my computer, and I don't see any chat history. I only see um, an empty chat box. Yeah, why don't you resend it? Anyway. Why don't we do this just to give Mr. Johnson a chance to kind of catch up. Uh, so why don't we give him uh, 10 days total? So uh, so or whatever the Monday is after next, so we'll have two weekends to get this done. Um, so let's let's have it due on October 12th. Yes, sir. And judge, if I may, we did ask for attorney's fees in our motion, and I'd like to very quickly present evidence on those if I may. Okay. Yes, sir. May I proceed? You may. Your Honor, my name is Hunter Noah. I represent the plaintiff's judgment creditors in this case. I've been a licensed attorney in Texas since 2012. Uh, my practice includes plaintiff's personal injury work, commercial matters, and also real estate. Uh, Your Honor, my, my going rate these days typically for my time is $350 an hour. And in this case, Drafting the motion to compel took me a, a little over an hour to prepare. The proposed order that we're going to file today took about half an hour to prepare. I, I've got about half an hour uh, in preparing to appear for the hearing today. And a, a couple of phone calls here and there with Martin while he was not represented to discuss the issues that we set forth in the motion. Unfortunately, those didn't really get us anywhere, which is why we're here today. Uh, Judge, I'd like to ask the court for a thousand dollars attorney's fees for my time on this motion. Rhonda, do we have a uh, notice of appearance? Okay, it doesn't seem like we do. Uh, all right, so the court will grant. Uh, no, we don't have one according to Rhonda. Um, all right, well, we'll go ahead and uh, grant the motion for sanctions to be made payable at the time. Well, I guess we already have a judgment. So, um, you know, and I'm going to give Mr. Johnson a chance here. It's going to, I'm going to require $1,000 uh, to be paid uh, in 10 days unless uh, answers, adequate answers are filed in that time period. So, if if they file adequate answers uh, that, you know, full, let me say instead of adequate, full and complete answers uh, within 10 days, then um, the court is not going to award sanctions. If they do, uh, if they don't file full and complete answers, then the court will award $1,000 in sanctions. Yes, could I, may I broach a subject with the court that I have not had any experience with on the civil side, uh, sure. uh, if it's appropriate. Um, <clears throat> has the court, uh, can the court provide any guidance if a party to a civil action <clears throat> basically flees the country? I mean, what, 
what do you ask it exactly? Well, obviously on the criminal side, you could, you know, amend bond conditions of bond. If somebody was on bond, if they're incarcerated pending trial, they're not going to wind up fleeing the country. But right. Mr. Mr. Martin has indicated that he either is living in England or he is going to flee to England. And uh, that's a problem, you know, and I don't know uh, if the court has ever had that experience before in other cases and how you may I have mean, handled it without committing you to any. You're, 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 you're asking a really big question there. I mean, a very broad question. I think that you need to realize in this particular case, it's about collecting a judgment. And so what you need to be doing is trying to find assets here, in the, or find assets, whether it's here in the United States or elsewhere, uh, and start executing on those assets. I think I've made it very clear that I'm willing to do that if it's appropriate, if we can show that they're owned by the ju judgment creditor or judgment debtors. Uh, but we just have to, you just have to be able to prove what exactly is owed and is there fraudulent transfers and things like that. I don't think it's a good strategy by Mr. Martin uh, to do that because if he doesn't have a voice in this process, I'm probably going to be a little bit, you know, if you only hear one side of the story, you're more likely to go with that side. And so uh, the idea that he's going to somehow be able to escape justice because he moves to, especially if his main assets are electronic, we could enforce that here in the United States all day long. Uh, and he doesn't necessarily even need to be here uh, if he's deciding to, to kind of flee the country. Now, it will be more difficult, obviously, to enforce contempt hearings against him to in imprison him if that's what needs to happen. Uh, and that's... I've only done that uh, in two cases that I've been involved with that we don't put people in jail as awful as you should do over in criminal court. I have done it, uh, but uh, I think obviously and my thought would be that you guys wanna be focusing on, okay, I need to find his assets and execute on them. And you don't necessarily need him here to do that, especially if there are if his main asset is, you know, YouTube channels and proceeds from YouTube channels and things like that. Uh, yes, sir. And, and I, I'm fond of making a bunch of trite sayings from time to time, but, you know, I'm not involved in any case where I'm trying to set court policy. We, we want to, you know, I, I encourage, and I counsel my clients, we're going to do business the way the court decides to do business. We don't do business as private attorneys the way we want to just do business. And so I hope you understand having not been before you in the past and being entirely familiar with how you handle certain circumstances. We, we just, while you can't give us advisory opinions and tell us how to practice law, I think we all know that, but sure. I just wanted to know, you know, in this, in my 30 years and especially just the 15 in private practice, not all that long, but I have not come across this situation in a civil matter and just don't have an idea really about how various judges would normally kind of handle that. Uh, if I mean, I, I come, I'm come. i going to follow the law on this. Yes. And so there's going to be issues potentially with the Hague Convention and all that kind of stuff to be able to get service on him if he goes to England. Uh, but the, the advantage you have is this is a post-judgment action. And so if he doesn't respond, he's already subject to jurisdiction here, in my opinion. And so you can just start executing on his asset and taking it. If he doesn't want to participate, uh, that's, uh, I think, a huge mistake on his part uh, to do that because, um, and I imagine once you start executing on, on these different assets that he has, these YouTube channels and proceeds from that, and all that kind of stuff, that there'll be people who will show up and say, "Hey, wait a minute, that's not his or whatever." If if that's if that's the case, I don't I don't know what the case is. Or he might start showing up and go, "Hey, I was getting ten thousand dollars a week, and now I'm not getting anything. Maybe I need to participate in this process." I think it, it would be very uh, short-sighted and and unwise of, of Mr. Martin to to not 
uh, participate in this process uh, to, to make sure that his interest is represented, but there's a judgment already. So we're just gonna start enforcing the judgment if he doesn't wanna participate. So, all right. There's a Holly Martin here. Is she involved in this case or is, she, is that somebody else? She just I, showed up. We definitely would like to get her contact information, Your Honor. Well, she just showed up on the... She's a British, uh, she's a citizen of the United Kingdom and all we have is a green card. And if she's making an appearance, I, I, like I just, all I know is that she's, I saw her on the Zoom. I don't know anything else of what she's doing. I just saw her on the Zoom and, and she, but she hasn't. Are you Holly Martin? Uh, Brian Martin, your honor. Oh, you're Brian Martin. Okay, well, I was just talking about you. So uh, apparently your attorney's not here or your attorney, you hired an attorney, I guess, but he's hasn't entered an appearance yet. So, uh, but we just granted a motion to compel against you. Are you here in the United States or where are you? I'm, I'm actually moved to the UK with my British wife, um, Your Honor. My, my uh, reason is Dan White is treating this as a criminal case. He's been abusive with my wife and myself. He that he wants to throw people in jail than to collect the judgment. My wife moved to the United uh, States to start a life in the United States and she fled the United States because she's afraid of the system. And I had to go with her because we're both autistic. We have mental problems. And um, so we wanted to, I, I, I had to go with her. Um, I came on here, Your Honor, because I wanted to defend myself against Dan's allegations. Um, I'm not hiding. I, I don't wanna waste the court's time. That's why I've hired representation so I can properly defend uh, myself, despite that I have moved, Your Honor. Um, and what I was saying to, to Mr. Wide and, and to your attorney uh, who, who hasn't officially made an appearance yet uh, is, uh, or person I believe, is it Mr. Johnson that you hired or the Hernandez firm? Yeah, uh, Alex Hernandez, Jr., Your Honor. Obviously they're concerned that you've moved to the UK. Uh, what I've told him is that this is a situation where they're trying to execute they're going to try i assume going to try to execute on all of your assets uh, and, and non-exempt assets uh including i guess you have a you may have a youtube channel and some other things i, I don't know all the details um and i told them i thought that would be very unwise for you to not have representation and, and for uh whoever owns these entities not to have representation because there's already a judgment against you. I'm not, I can't, I have nothing to say about that other than my job here is to, to make a determination of which of the, your assets are exempt, which of your assets are not exempt, and then what's owned by you and subject to, 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 be, to levy. And so um, you moving to UK I think may actually put you at a bit of a disadvantage because it's going to be harder for you to defend yourself here. Uh, but that's your choice. Uh, if you know you decided you wanted to, to do that, if you felt like that, but that's not going to keep the levy from occurring. We're going to, they're going to continue to levy on your assets and, and you know, that's, and if there's assets in the UK, we'll work on getting levies on that. Well, the assets here in the United States, but that's, that's where we are in the process. Uh, yes, yes, Your Honor. If I may, under oath, I, I would like to say that um, I, I do not own any YouTube channels. In 2017, they tried to, to do this again with these YouTube channels and, and say that I owned them and the motion was denied also by the federal judge and they're continuing to harass other YouTube channels, Your Honor. They said that they would go after any YouTube channel that the video games YouTube channel worked with, Your Honor. And I. Um, I've, it just feels like a, a big witch hunt. Um, may, I, may I have a moment of the court's time? I'm not, I've already ruled on, there's one motion that's here. There's a motion to compel. I we, ruled on the motion to compel. Yes. I granted the motion to compel. I'm not ruling on any of this stuff. But, right but, now, Mr. Martin, you have the obligation within 10 days to answer their motion, to com their uh, request for uh, their, their uh, discovery requests. If you don't answer those, you'll be sanctioned. 
if they attempt to levy on this YouTube channel, uh, then it's going to be up to whoever owns that to, or you to say who is the owner uh, and is there some type of fraudulent transfer, which I think is what they're alleging, if I understand. Um, but no, nothing like that is being decided today. You are Judge. far better off to you, you are far better off, Mr. Martin, to participate in this project process and defend yourself and and whoever owns these YouTube channels. If someone else does, they should participate in this process. But um, that's I guess I don't really have anything else to say. But that's that's what we're doing today. We, I asked your the court to note that he's made an appearance at the motion to compel hearing. And consequently, if we ask the court for guidance uh, on if Mr. Martin terminates counsel and we have to have substituted service, at this point, what we're asking, which is, happen which is what happened in, in July, if you will, or August, which is why we don't have, why we have new alleged new counsel, Mr. Johnson, but he's made an appearance now in this hearing. And uh, we ask that the court note that he's made that appearance. We're, we're on the record, Mr. Wide, so that's already so, going to be noted. And, and okay. sir, if you could state your full name so the court reporter gets it. My, my, mine, Your Honor? Yes. Uh, it's uh, Brian Dennis Martin, Your Honor. Are we entitled? Did you want something specific from him? Because I know you wanted to serve him maybe via email or YouTube or not YouTube, um, Facebook or something. Is that yeah. email and street mailing address, regardless of where he's living in what country? I'm currently in a hotel right now. Um, what is your email address? Email, uh, my email address, Your Honor, is uh, xmail.com. And what hotel, may I ask? I'm in a premier. And the street address, please. I, I don't know this street address. Um, in, in what city? It's in Clacton. Please spell that for the record. C-L-A-C-T-O-N. And what uh, province or state? I'm not familiar with um, that type of geography. Do they have provinces and states in the UK? I, I don't know that they do. Okay, so it's just that. Claxton, what country? It is in the United Kingdom. And what country, sir? Is, is this United Claxton States. on sea in England? Um, in Essex, England, Claxton on sea? Clack, uh, yes. In Essex, England? Yes. Thank you. And All right, guys, I really need to get to my next hearing. So uh, anything else we need to chat about? No, no sir, you're on. Get me an order on this, uh, Mr. Martin and Mr. Johnson. I would strongly urge you to comply with the order and uh, we will uh, see you at the next one. Oh, I, I see that Mr. Johnson is raising his hand. Uh, no, that was that, that was an accident. I was trying to unmute myself. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's, that was a new one. All right, guys. Thank you so much. You guys be safe. All right. Thank you, John. Have a good weekend. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Take care. Okay. I think we have one more hearing.